first of all, just the obvious, which is how technology impacts people around the world outside of Las Vegas. I mean, I think sometimes we get so enamored with the, the leading edge technology and all the cool stuff here, we forget about how it impacts the other five or six billion people around the world. I just we'll talk about some of our experiences and examples in that area, and then kind of at the end we'll come back and try to encourage people to get involved in in helping with a couple of the real problems that exist. The, the, the two problems I'll talk about are economic development and also education. Seventy-five million kids who aren't in school and uh, microloans. And we're we're going to try to engage the the audience here and then the greater audience in working with both uh, Save the Children and Kiva.com in terms of microloans for economic development and Save the Children, to, uh, the work they're doing to get kids in school, especially in areas of political strife or strife, uh, the really dour places around the world. So these are actually new partnerships with Save the Children well, and Kiva? Yeah, we're, we're basically agreeing to uh, to be there their extension, their spokesperson to try to give them greater visibility and such. We did a little bit with, with Kiva, the, the developers forum we had uh, last fall. Uh, used, used them as an example and we'll continue to do that. This is part of the program of um, giving low-cost computers to the developed world, or is that a separate thing? No, this, thing? this is... This is Totally separate. I mean, Kiva is basically a microfinance, micro loan organization, and it's not a charity. It's uh, very much of a of a helping entrepreneurs get on their feet. And if you go to kiva.org, you can see the examples and opportunities uh, to participate there. I, I just went on their line, site last night just in preparation for coming here and made 40 quick loans to entrepreneurs around the world. Uh, you know, so it's not a tax deduction, it's, it's a basic an investment. Uh, Save the Children is more of a charitable contribution because the, uh, they're just striving to get kids back in school. And so there's not an immediate return on that investment, it is a charity. So why is Intel doing this? <laughs> Intel, <laughs> it's really an extension of the World Ahead program we've had in, in our activities in the emerging economies. Uh, you know, we've been demonstrating around the world the impact of technology on education, on health care, on economic development, on the ability of governments to interface with their citizens. And so we're just extending that World Ahead program through these two organizations to see what more we can do. And it's to get more and more people involved. And we thought the stage here at CES was a pretty good vehicle to do that. With microloans, a lot of the um, recipients of those, especially in developing countries, uh, are often women. And um, what are your thoughts about how programs like this, I mean, when I even look around the hall here at CES, the number of women in the industry is still very, very low, but how we can help women in business and how Intel, through investments like this, and what are your thoughts about the role of women in, in the technology realm these days? Well, it, by the way, it's, it is, the female issue is not just... Uh, in uh, economic development. It's also very, very much from the education side. Because if you look at the kids that are not in school, uh, there's a majority of them who are female as well. It's not equally distributed. Uh, a lot of young girls get kept out of school just because the family can't afford it or they're needed to work or something else stand for. Um, but the, the attitude, I think, if you look at microloans is that Quite often in the emerging economies, the female is a stable member of the family, and it's, uh, if you can get the the uh, female head of family to have a, an operating job and operating income, support the family, then you give the family a stability to help get kids in school, and everything good happens after that. Uh, by the way, when I went through the key list, and you go to the Kiva.org, and they have a photograph of each of the individual and a description of their their uh, uh, business proposition. So you can pick and choose who you want to loan to. I, I almost found myself crossing over the guys and just funding the females. And I, went down I support that. <laughs> I thought you might. The guys all sort of winced in the room when I said that. Because they know it's the right move, that's all. <laughs> um, 
you know, there seems to be large, a part of a larger trend in some ways, right? I mean, in the last couple of years, we've seen more and more technology companies. We've seen, um, you know, the Gates Foundation support a lot of these film profit crosses. Um, what, what, do you, what do you think is happening in the larger scope of things? Um, well, that, I, I think uh, as the world has become a smaller place and the big high-tech companies, the Cisco's, the Intel's, the Microsoft's, the IBM's, do operate around the world, uh, you have a better view of what's happening. If you're successful, you want to give something back to society. Everybody has that form of cor corporate social responsibility. Yeah. Um, you know, companies like Intel uh, in the past have been very active in areas such as education. Uh, the issue is we haven't been that active outside of the U.S. We started you know, within the last decade to really expand our education program to an international scope. and We started the Intel Teach program to train teachers to put technology in the classroom effectively. And we've really scaled that program up and it's actually kind of surprising because that program is much more successful outside the United States than it is in the U.S. It's, it's much more difficult in the U.S. with our 15,000 separate school districts in 50 states and All such. kids left behind in the first place. And it's much more difficult to get teachers and school districts to want to invest in those sort of things. But if you go to um, India, China, uh, many of the European countries, uh, Egypt, the African countries, Latin American countries, people leap at the chance for additional education to bring additional skills to the classroom. In the U.S. it's just not considered to be hip. Well, speaking about the U.S., we have a new administration coming in very, very shortly. Um, there's been a lot of talk in who's going to be the CTO of the U.S. You know, what, what are the, the, the needs of the new administration on the technology front? What If you could sit down with Obama tomorrow and give him a couple pieces of advice, what might you, what might you say? Oh, I'd, I'd uh, <laughs> probably uh, talk about a, a couple of different areas. I mean, one is the age we, issue we've talked about forever, which is uh, broadband for the U.S., and, and that's a common topic on everybody's lips these days. I talk extensively about the effective integration of technology into healthcare. I mean, healthcare is, aside from education, is the big Achilles heel of the United States, which is not getting any attention. But the healthcare debate is how do you cost shift or how do you ensure 45 million additional people? There is really no active discussion on how do you make the system more patient-centric, deliver better care at lower cost. And technology is the only way you can do that. Is there anything that, you, that we can help with um, in, as citizens or as individuals or as bloggers um, spreading the word? Well, I, I think you have the, the perfect opportunity to understand what technology can accomplish and uh, to share that with more and more people, uh, especially in areas like education and healthcare. Uh, but I, I would also hope that you uh, you know you balance that with the fact that uh, if you look at education, technology is not the answer. Technology is one of the tools that you can use. Uh, the really important things in education are you have good teachers. If you don't have good teachers, that's the game is over before you get started. But once you have good teachers and technology can complement, supplement make the system even better. So you, you can't assume that technology uh, supersedes the lack of other fundamental uh, foundations in the system. I was wandering around the booth a little earlier you know, with that cool touch screen and the technology in the car and all of the mobile internet device. I mean, the technology, especially Intel technology, is pervasive. It's everywhere. In the last months, we've had several occasions with news events where you know, un the unfortunate news, things like what happened in Mumbai, where things like Twitter and technology have allowed us to communicate. What are your thoughts about where we may go and where Intel may help us go in that on that path? Well, I look at technology as, uh, uh, as a great equalizer and opportunity. Uh, it's a great democratizing of those. It allows the, the access to information anywhere, anytime. And 
So I've always been very, very positive on, on technology because of that. It gives the individual access to the world's information. Database allows people to communicate from society to society, culture to culture. So I think it's a, a very strong, a cohesive entity to, to bring us closer together. There's also no question that any technology can be used from a negative standpoint. I mean, that, that's, that started with gunpowder and bows and arrows and <laughs> rocks and what have you. So uh, I always tend to look beyond the, the unfortunate negative uses of technology and look at the positives because every technology has either positive or negative uses. And I think the positives far away. It's foreseeable that future civilizations will have statues of computers, <laughs> and they will say it was the computer that set them free. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I've had the personal experience of being in southern Mexico, and at an internet cafe where four or five young women will congregate around one computer, and they will I am a friend living in Chicago, and these young women live on the side of mountains and huts with no electricity. And yet, they're empowered by the PC. Well, it's, you know, it, it is the most rewarding thing in the world to uh, go to a remote rural village, and whether it's in southern Mexico or Egypt, or South Africa, uh, Lebanon, wherever it might be, and to expose kids for the first time to the internet and to access to the world's information database. I mean, in space of a day or two. Oh, ducks they, to water. Yeah, they're, they're surfing the net, they're looking at this, <laughs> yeah. they're doing that, and you put them in communication with kids someplace else, and they're, you know, it's like they're it's They're teaching always, you. It's like it's always <laughs> been there. Uh, it, it's fantastic to see the change in their attitude. Uh, uh, I'll tell a little story in, in my speech tomorrow, so you have to laugh at the same time <laughs> today. <laughs> We're good shells, don't we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the... the in Baramati, in, in southwest India, we went in and worked with the local uh, folks, one of the technical universities, to create computer buses, computer labs and buses. Because if you look at India as a whole, the number of computers per school, actually you don't use that ratio, you use the inverse of that, the number of schools per computer is like 2,000 to 1. Wow. So if you want to start to talk about bringing computers to school, you don't talk about, let's just give a computer to the school. You try to think about, well, let's create a computer lab and a bus and drive the bus from school to school to school. That way, one computer lab can service a dozen schools. And so we were at this uh, small rural school, and the bus was there, obviously, because I was there, and they arranged the two. And I was talking to this young 10-year-old girl, and I asked her what her favorite subject was. And she said, Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, it turns out, was the day the computer lab came to their school. And then if you, and then if you look down a little bit deeper than that, you ask them, uh, what was the level of truancy or, or dropout rate before you started to have the computer bus to afterwards? Twice as many kids were staying in school. I mean, this was... The dropout rate went from, you know, 60% to 20%, so 80% of the kids. I mean, once you see that happen, you just say, wow, impact is phenomenal. Impact is phenomenal. What do you think the biggest challenge, I mean, other than sheer numbers, the sheer numbers of people and the kind of getting the access to people, what kind of technological hurdles do you think that we need to overcome or educational in terms of teaching people to use the technology? Well, I, I think from an educational standpoint, the biggest challenge is still getting qualified teachers. I mean, that's not only a problem in in Egypt, it's a problem in the United States when you look at quality education, especially the math, science, and technical topics. So quality teachers are still the key to all of this. But once you get quality teachers, then in fact it's great giving the access to the hardware software, it's giving access to the connectivity, and then it's giving access to the content. Because it's really that combination of content, connectivity, and the physical computer, which makes the solution. And you have to give that in the hands of a capable teacher. Well, today, can a single teacher affect the lives of... I just want to say that this would be the last question. Sure. 
you, a you, single teacher can affect the lives of 10,000 people today in a year, whereas in the past, a, a single teacher can only affect the lives of 30 people. It, it's very true that that you can take a, a, an expert in a field and, and capture their lectures and, and distribute that, and, and that can be part of the foundation of an educational process. But I think the examples are typically that you still need good local teachers to supplement the canned presentation. Someone locally needs to be there to be able to answer the questions, to prod the kids, to stimulate the kids. You know, I, I would guess around this table that if I asked you uh, what really influenced you in your education, you would all probably say there was this teacher or that teacher that really made it happen. Yep. And I'm in the, that same category. So uh, although I think that you can intelligently incorporate the technology through, you know, this guy is the best lecturer on quadratic equations in the world, and therefore you can use that as a basis, you still need somebody there that can help the kids and answer the questions and show them the relevance of the lecture material that they're seeing at the local level. You know, getting a, uh, a uh, mathematics teacher from Boston and transferring it into Baramati, India is a, is a stretch, unless you've got somebody in Baramati who knows what's going on. But it, it is a great extender, there's no question about that. But I still think there are other things you need besides that. So, what is your favorite part, and you're clearly very passionate about this, what is your favorite part of the, the role that you're in now? Well, there are two parts. One is, I still love the base technology. You know, when we started, uh, when I started at Intel, you could see transistors with your naked eye. And today you can't see them with an optical microscope. <laughs> and so I love the idea that we can make these microprocessors with a billion or so transistors, and you can't even see what you're making, and, but we can make a billion of them work together. I think that's really cool at the atomistic level. Uh, the other part is is the emerging market part, which is seeing how technology can impact people's lives. And whether it's school children or whether it's a, the local entrepreneur or whether uh, it's uh, what can be accomplished in a remote clinic with some diagnostic equipment and a broadband connection back to a hospital, how you can transfer the knowledge in the hospital to a rural village with a base technology that we have today and how that impacts people's lives on a daily basis.